second to get ready here. In the meantime, uh, I'm pretty excited about this venue and this crowd still not over it. So I want to take a full panorama photo. And you can choose whatever sort of face you want to make. I, I, I won't uh, judge, but I'll leave that to the internet. So give me a second here. And here we go. And let's hell it sits down. Come on. All right, give me a sec. <laughs> Love it. All right. Without further ado, here's Keith with React. All right. Can you hear me? Did that work? Yeah. Oh, cool. It's like, it's worth it in there. Interesting. I just realized after I got in here that this ad campaign's like 15 years old, so I said they feel really old. Uh, Hello, my name is Keith Kirak. I'm a mobile uh, developer specializing in React Native at Nudge Coach. Uh, to make a long story short, it's a uh, health coach to fitness client engagement platform. You can look it up more and buy it. Uh, uh, I'm also a hobbyist iOS and Pokemon developer. Uh, my full time job um, up until four months ago was fullstack.net developer. Uh, this is my first four months without a Windows computer. Pray for me. Um, <laughs> actually, it's great. Uh, but uh, it, yeah, it was uh, just, uh, I guess you could consider myself a switcher. It was, uh, it was a big jump from, uh, you know, never always working with Microsoft to never working with Microsoft and working on mobile when I never was working on mobile really before. But at the same time, even though I had experience doing it, um, you know, on my own, um, it was a, smooth, a smoother transition to React Native, something that I really learned most of after scheduling the interview <laughs> for the job. Uh, uh, as opposed to if they said, hey, go do what we're asking you to do in, in native iOS or, God forbid, Android. Um, so what is React Native anyway? React Native is uh, you've got your, your JavaScript running on one side, and you've got it actually maps to full native components. So instead of like a, a div or, or, or you know whatever things you do in HTML, uh, it's actually a real like UI view. Uh, if you're iOS, or an Android view if you're on Android, and there's JavaScript crossing over the threshold in real time asynchronously, and of course you've got iOS and Android operating system somewhere. Another way of thinking of it is it's React without the divs plus native components. Uh, how many have done anything with React around here? Cool, so future slides will be relevant because it actually will mention what React is. A little more. Who is a switcher? Uh, switcher is uh, someone who maybe is doing web today and wants to do mobile tomorrow. Uh, someone who is an aspiring polyglot and just wants to collect all the languages. Uh, someone, it can also be a team, a team that wants to, um, you know, maybe they're not doing mobile today, maybe they're doing full stack web development. They want to add mobile to the repertoire without having, you know, like the weird, like, hey, those are the guys over in the corner who do mobile. We don't code review them, we don't even care if they unit test, because they just do weird, arcane iOS and Android stuff. They'd actually like them to be part of their team. Um, teams that find um, uh, phone gap you know, limiting in some way, it just doesn't quite do what they want. They wish they had full control over the native platform. Um, and someone like me who doesn't know what they want to do with it. Well. <laughs> it's... <laughs> 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 you guys still hear this okay? Yeah. Oh wait, oh it shut everything it down. Shut the whole room. Oh, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go on the next slide and you're gonna reboot that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so why is React Native for Switcher? So I have three. Um, this is actually the one slide I was gonna recite verbatim. So this is perfect. <laughs> I have like, three reasons why React Native is for Switcher. Number one, it affirms and complements your existing knowledge and best instincts as a web developer, a front-end developer, a back-end developer, a native developer, a desktop developer, a React developer, whatever. Uh, it's a bunch of stuff you already know applied in a slightly different way. Uh, my second reason, <laughs> I just realized all my bullet points say number one, number one, number one, and it's like, you actually can see that. Um, my second reason, uh, go Google Slides. Um, my second reason is it's cross-platform in the best way. The apps are using native components. They look very native. They have those really smooth 60 frames per second drawer slider um, uh, transitions and stuff like that. Um, yet, developing on React Native is simpler than developing on either of the mobile platforms, uh, I think. Um, and you can share, like, 
95% of your code between the two, yeah, it doesn't look like an app that's just kind of in no man's land. Yeah, it probably looks mostly like iOS, but it looks mostly like iOS and Android. You can actually be like, I want the, this part to look very specifically like this way to Android and have a ton of control over that. Uh, and my third reason is um, that you don't have to spend days and days fighting the tooling just to get the hello world or to production. There's some really cool tooling. I forgot to mention something on my first slide, so this is also part that isn't loaded up, so I'll mention it. I have a little interactive bit later, and I can't guarantee this will work at all, but if you want to download the Expo client on your phone, you may be able to try something later. Um, I'm not going to stop and make sure anybody does that, except for right now, because I have nothing else to do. Um, but, and I can't guarantee it will actually work, but you can try it, and if you get there and it works, that will be pretty cool. Um, my next slide actually has code on it, so I'm might not get too far. <laughs> What's your background? What's my background? Um, oh, like in general? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I worked. Um, I spent my first ten years of my career working in. Um, That's uh, slide loaded. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. That's perfect timing. <laughs> So all right, this is my, my intro to React, and hey, this looks familiar because this is React. Um, React is all based on the concept of you have a, uh, a function or a class that takes, given a state or given props, so state is things that are inside your class, props are things that come from the outside, render something. So in this case, we start with an empty list of items, and then we call our API asynchronously, and when it's done being called, it fills the items up. And all this time, this render is being called and called again. It's called the first time when there's no items, and it shows you a loading screen. And it's called the next time when the items are there, and it actually shows all the items, as you can see on the left or the right. Um, so that's the, the gist of React. I, I bring this up just so people understand what React is in general if you don't already understand, and also that this is much more familiar if you're, say, coming from the website, say, coming from React, or even coming from Angular, any modern JavaScript framework. It's much more of a space of familiarity going from that to mobile than it is, say, jumping into like native iOS. I, I had a slide on here earlier that I cut out that had like a billion different table view delegate methods that you use on iOS. That's just a core one. I can't imagine what kind of arcing weirdness they do in Android. I'm just not even going to think about that. <coughs> So this is the next, now that we got our, our kind of basis, yes, React is familiar in that way. It's also familiar to a lot of other people who are coming from a lot of different backgrounds. Uh, I did a little mini presentation on what the heck is React Native, because when I started my geo job, my, my boss was basically like, go write an app in React Native and then tell us about it. Uh, so my server, our server side guy, uh, you know, PHP Laravel guy, he was like, hey, oh my goodness, you've got like real imports, because our old app had like, just like everything pasted at the bottom index HTML, uh, and, and you've got like, these, these well-defined small components, everything's kind of very, you know, componentized and unit testable. Like, this is amazing. It feels like my server-side code. So this, this is satisfying to the server-side guy. You know, you've got, okay, I want a list of messages. I'm going to make a message list screen. I'm going to have some kind of subcomponent. That's my message cell. So I'm going to make sure I have my, my individual cell in a separate class. And I'm, all I'm doing is really I'm writing a function that's passing all these data down to each level. And when the messages change, this gets re-rendered. And it calls each, that message cell for each cell that's visible on the screen. And that gets re-rendered. And React handles all this for you. Um, another, another constituency of developer that's satisfying to is even to the native iOS developer. I immediately recognize this pattern of this flat list. This flat list is a proxy for whatever an Android table is or a UI table view controller in iOS. And it takes data, it has a function for rendering the current position data, so it kind of abstracts like what's on the screen, so it only knows to render what's on the screen. We call that the infamous self arrow index path in iOS. Um, and it has things for table separators and all that good stuff. Um, so it's very familiar and it's very accessible to lots of different types of developers. Um, the cross-platform bits. Here is a React Native app, and I think HomeAway is a mobile iOS app because I saw no job postings for React Native on their site. Uh, <laughs> and Airbnb, of course, they're famous. They, they populate all my renting rules and stuff like that, so I have to code the way Airbnb does. Uh, and they both look good. Um, I'll be honest, I actually see PhoneGap and Cordova actually are looking pretty good, too. I saw an app in, in the iMac framework, too, and I was like, 
that's almost perfect. And then I went to refresh something, and like the little like pull to refresh was like, jum, 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 jum. so you can, I, it's, it looks good. Uh, <laughs> so um, styling, uh, and I could have easily put this in another section, but styling, um, it's it's kind of neat to think about in the cross-platform sense because it's easy to style once, it's easy to go style on the other platform. Um, it's it's very accessible because it's like CSS, but it's just a JavaScript. Um, object, so actually you don't even need like SAS or anything like that. Like you could just make it out of anything you want. You know, you could make a whole little hierarchy of JavaScript objects and, and make them your styles. Um, but it also, it, it only uses Flexbox. So you know, you might have to look at like you know floats and lefts and clears in HTML or Flexbox, or in React Native. Your only choice is Flexbox. So immediately, for someone like me who never felt that good at styling, I had one way to learn things. Um, and it's very uh, uh, you know. Pretty, pretty straightforward. It's like, okay, I've got a cell. I've got padding all around my cell. I've got um, flex direction row, which means I'm going to orient everything towards a row. And then I've got my justify constant, which says, all right, I'm going to start from the left. Uh, so you know, I start with my little you know icon guy, and then the rest of my text. And then I get my right side, where now I'm going to start thinking about things as columns. So now I'm getting into my title and my um, my text. Um, and then I got my top right, where I'm talking about that title and that date, where I'm saying, okay, I'm still thinking about rows again, but now I'm thinking about space between, so put these things as far apart from me as possible. And now you have something that was just way, like if you ever looked at UI constraints in iOS, you would just be like, oh my goodness, like they actually have you like write out text, like little ASCII lines between things. It's the weirdest stuff ever. It's much harder than this. Uh, finally, it's also easy to break out in the platform specific code. So uh, if you want a special Android button, you go custom button.android.js. And you want it for iOS, you go custom button.ios.js. And when you import it, you just say, I want a custom button. And it figures out for you which platform uh, is the one you're using. The cool dev tools. So this is the, uh, the part where you can bring out your phone with the Expo client if you have it. And if it, apparently this works. I tried to cross the room with my laptop, and actually worked OK. So hopefully we'll be giant screens. If you scan this in the Expo app, I'm not saying this is a good demo, but it will load a demo app I built. And I just thought that was a powerful concept that you can actually run a sample app. You know, given all the App Store stuff and security, you can go run a sample app that's fully native uh, on your phone just by scanning QR code. So you can try that. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, I'll also post links or something on the meetup. But Expo is a really cool dev tool. It's actually like curated React Native. Uh, so basically, these geniuses suppose, hey, what if I take React Native, and what if we just assume, you know how I said there was JavaScript and there was native bits to React Native? They just said, what if we just assume everything that was native, everything that could compile down to machine code, always stayed the same? Um, then we could put one app on the store that could be a, a blank, an empty shell for any other app. It's almost like a web browser, except for native apps. Uh, so this is what Expo is, is they say, we're going to freeze all the native stuff, you write the JavaScript, we bundle the JavaScript, upload it to the web, and, and um, it, uh, it actually downloads it to your app. So this means lots of cool things. It means you don't have to worry about native libraries. Um, I've spent hours trying to build one of those sometime and, and breaking stuff because of native libraries. It's got everything in the kitchen sink in there, so you probably don't need any other native libraries. You don't even need a, a MacBook to write an iOS app. You could actually write native apps on a Chromebook if you wanted to, probably, because all you need is your phone and a, com and a command line. Um, and <laughs> this is the sneaky part. Apparently, you can update the bundle in the web, and the app on the App Store will download it automatically, so you could actually sneakily update your app without Apple being involved. Uh, don't tell them. So yeah, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to present. Um, if you want to try a really easy way to actually write your own mobile app, go to snack.expo.io, and it's actually a text editor in your web browser that presents the same kind of QR code, and you can go from web browser to native app on your phone. Thank you very much.